Hello there, and how are you doing today? Oh, I am so glad to hear it. And me, you ask? Well, I'm doing absolutely superb. I've had the second vaccination almost two weeks ago, and I am doing just great. There were no after effects, no problems with either one of the vaccinations. So, all the fears were unfounded. So, I am now back to normal. Well, <laughs> normal for me anyway. <laughs> now, today's flight was requested by a YouTuber by the name of George. Thank you, George, for requesting this. I am more than happy to do it. He asked for Gatwick EGKK, that's the code, to Dublin, E-I-D-W. So, Gatwick to Dublin. And another YouTuber who goes by the name of iTalk Games, he wants a flight between Dublin and Manchester. Hmm. So what I thought I would do is I would make this video the first of a two-parter. So this week I'm going to fly to Dublin and then next week I'm going to fly back from Dublin to Manchester. How does that sound? Okay? Now, Ryanair, of course, is famous for doing the Dublin route, but they haven't flown for three months. So let's have a look at the pre-flight preparation and some of the history behind this route that we're flying today. Well, here we are in the preparation stage. We're going to be following Ryanair flight FR121. Now, that's not scheduled until the 1st of June. Apparently there have been no flights between Gatwick and Dublin, as far as I can discover. And when the UK lifts its restrictions on the 1st of June, so the flights will start and recommence again. So, here's the information that I was able to find online about Orion Air FR121, scheduled for 1st of June, and at the South Terminal. Here's a bit more detail. Departure in 18 days, Terminal South, arrival in Dublin. It's a 737-800, which just happens to be what we are flying. <laughs> and there's the scheduled departure and arrival times and the flight duration is 1 hour 15 minutes according to this. Well let's have a look at the weather conditions right now for Gatwick EGKK -K. and if you see here we've got a very interesting low pressure area just off the south coast and it's uh, creating a bit of a mess in some of the areas according to this we're down to minimum vfr which in all likelihood will probably mean an ifr departure in any case it's saying that eight minutes ago the wind was 160 degrees at six knots, varying from 120 to 190. Visibility 10 knots. So, 
light rain, clouds, well, got all typical British weather here. Let's have a look at the runways. And there's the runway information that we've got. There's just the two. Not sure which one we're going to be cleared for, but we'll find that out in just a moment. Now at our destination is the conditions for Dublin. It's saying that currently it is VFR. Wind is 290 degrees at four knots. Not bad. So that should mean that we'll be coming in on 28 left uh, if all goes well. Now, here's the historic flight. Ryanair 121 arrived over three months ago. And here's the, the flight path. Not sure exactly uh, that we'll be following the arrival and departures on this, but interesting to see here, first of all, the altitude is 36,000 feet. So we're going to follow that route. So let's go into sim brief and file our flight plan, shall we? So we need to go and we're Ryanair. We are flight 186. And we're going to depart from EG KK and we're going to go to EIDW and there's the alternate they've given us and we're going to be putting that in passengers because we are so special we are full we have one ton of cargo, half a ton up front, half a ton behind. I'm going to leave the altitude at auto just to see what sim brief will bring up. And here's the route that it's produced. And there is the actual route below. So let's go ahead and accept this. So we will save the flight and then generate. We are going to need to bring the file plan into Active Sky. We're going to need to bring it into uh, the simulator itself as we file the IFR. Ah, interesting. We've been given a cruise altitude of 30,000 feet. And it says it's the planned optimal flight level for the weather conditions that we are currently experiencing. Remember, winds aloft do change. And if you've got a tailwind, that's all well and good. But if you don't, then obviously it's going to make a big impact. So there's the route. And here we've got block fuel is 5,529 kilograms. Airtime is 52 minutes. And there's the routing right here. And that's the information that we will need to put into Navigraph when we produce our flight plan in Navigraph. All right, let's have a quick look and just see what the 
weather profiles are. Well, you can see that there, there is a frontal movement here, so we're going to have to pass right through that. That's uh, possibly why we're given the routing that we've got. Here's the winds at 24,000, and here's the winds at our cruise altitude. Everything is very, very changeable. Ah, and here's our profile. And I can see here one of the reasons why we were given 30,000 feet. This dotted line that you can see here, that's the tropopause. That's the difference between the troposphere and the stratosphere. So we should have not bad weather above that line. Okay, we've got the information, we've exported the information and the file plan, so time to get into the cockpit. Right, if you're ready, let's start. Here's your seat, buckle up, and let's get ourselves started. We're already fueled. We have all the fuel that we need on board. No tankering is recommended, so it's just going to be a very simple flight today. We're here at Gatwick Airport. We're at stand 28, and we are running wide view and wide traffic. So it's going to be interesting to see how the traffic situation works out today. So, get my seat adjusted. And first thing I'm going to do, of course, is turn on the battery, turn on the fuel pumps, and I'm going to start the APU. The service hatch is open and the air stairs are already down and our passengers are going to come out of the door here on the left or some may come out from over there. We're not sure yet, but we'll, we'll be ready for them when they are. Okay, the engine gas temperature of the APU, the auxiliary power unit, has risen. It'll start to drop in just a moment. And then when this blue light comes on to tell us that we have uh, 115 volts available, we'll switch to that. There it is. Good. We now have 115 volts showing on the bus. So now we can turn on the galley. We can turn on the IRS to get our GPS working. Emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt. There's the left and the right window heat and the probes and then the electrical pumps go on and then over here that's the APU bleed once I turn these on we'll hear that rush of air there it goes there's the rush of air that tells us that we have the compressor working there first thing that we need to do then is program the flight computer. The air rack is up to date. Program is good. So now we're going into position and we are at EGKK. We're at gate stand 28. Let's see if it comes up. 
it did. Right, we have the everything in. Now we go to the root. Our origin, of course, is EGKK. Our destination is EIDW. Our flight number is Ryanair 186. We're always 186. Now we'll go down to the next page and we're looking at the information we have on our routing. So we're going to go direct to IMBUR. Then we're going to go on the November 6-3 route until we get to VOUGA. Then we're going to take the November 14 route. until we get to M-E-D-O-G. Then we take the L-18 to get to Ablin, A-B-L-I-N. And that is our route so we'll activate that now we'll go into departure we are presuming that we will be departing from uh, eight right but we'll have to get that information from the ATIS so let's tune in to ATIS and see what they give us and ATIS frequency is 136.52. Gatwick Airport Information, Juliet 1030 in Zulu, visibility 120 at 6, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, temperature, few clouds at 600, 1400, scattered, ceiling 3000, broken, dew point, altimeter 108. 1005, landing and departing, runway 8, right, VFR aircraft, a direction of flight, all aircraft read back on short instructions, advise controller on initial contact, you have Juliet. Well, we have Juliet. So the wind is 120 at 7, and landing and departing runway 8 or right is what we will have then. So there's 8 right. And that means we'll be using the the Indo One Zulu departure. Now we'll go to arrivals, and we're going to presume that we're coming in at 23 left, and we're coming in on ILS. ILS 23, 20, excuse me, 28 left. So we'll put that in. And we'll be using the Ablin 2X. And there it is. That's now in. So we'll now go to fix and we'll put in EIDW. We need a four mile radius, 10 mile radius, and a 30 mile radius. The reason for that is four miles is when we can drop the gear according to Ryanair standards. 10 miles, well, then we need to be at flaps 10. That's about one of the reasons, it's the one I use. 30 miles, that radius is simply to let me know that that is when I can actually contact 
the tower. I would be in range of the tower frequency at that point. Now we go to descent and we'll put in the information for the three main altitudes. The Q&H for Dublin at the minute is 1009. And then we'll put in the wind speed and directions for these three parts. So it's for 200, it is 177 18. Uh, for 150, it is 178 slash 7. And for 100, it is 313 slash 1. Looks good. And we'll execute that. Now we'll go to our performance. And if we look at the reserves plus the trip and taxi, that comes to 4,864, that is close to 4.9, so 4.9, rounded out, is our plan. Reserves are 2.3, and then we'll let the onboard computer calculate the rest for us. With cost index 6, as I said, we're flying at flight level 300. Our average wind is 136 at 22. The transition altitude at Dublin is 5,000 feet. And execute that. We're just going to go in with the 11 degrees. For takeoff, we are flaps 5. Center of gravity is given at 23.7%. The trim wheel will be set for 4.79. And then here is the information for our B1 for the rotation speed and there's our V2 speed there. Since we'll be leaving from 8 right according to that we will be we will be on a heading of 078 so 078 our Mac is going to be 146 we don't know what altitude we're going to be given for clearance so we'll leave it at that at the moment here we'll put in the 30,000 feet for our pressure, for the altitude, landing altitude, the elevation there is 242 feet, so we'll put 250 in here for the landing altitude. And we're next, we're going to put in the radio altimeter for, as 50 feet because that's our decision height. Okay, now let's check and make sure that this is going to be working. We have two green lights, so we'll arm that. 
The ILS VOR is 111.35. So we'll get that ready. ATIS is 124.53. And that's the ATIS for Dublin. And we've got that in. Right, let's get those turned on and we'll check the flight plan, making sure that we have everything looking good. We'll step through our route. And we have a good route. All right. Everything is working out good on that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to request clearance for our IFR flight plan. So let's tune in to Gatwick clearance of 121.95. And let's ask for a clearance. So let's Gatwick clearance delivery, Ryanair 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Dublin International. Ryanair 186 is clear to Dublin International Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000. Departure frequency as 126.825 squad 3716. 3176, okay, and acknowledge. Ryanair 186, clear to Dublin International Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000. Departure on 126.825 score 3716. Ryanair 186, rim back correct. Contact ground on 121.8. So 121.8. And request our taxi. Gatwick ground, Ryanair 186, we're Lima ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to an old shore of runway 8 right, using taxiway Julia Rebecca Foxtrot Romeo Julia contact tower on. Hold short, runway 8, right, using taxi where Juliet, Quebec, Foxtrot, Romeo, Juliet, Ryanair 186. Well, we have our clearance and we're all set. The passengers have loaded on, so we're going to close up the hatches and bring up the equipment. Good. Air stairs are up and that's back. Well, Next, we're going to request our pushback from the ground crew and our, we will start the engines. And we're going to be pushed back and have our nose go to the left because that's the direction that we need to go. Right, we're going to request the start and push. Okay, let's see what they say. Got good to ground. We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Police brake right, please. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Turning the air conditioning Here off, we and we're going to start with engine number two today, so I'm switching to generator two, and switching to ground on here. The start valve has opened, and we have the N2 rising, we're looking for 24 on that. And then bring in the fuel. It's 
quite a busy airport here. There's a lot of aircraft around us. Checking that we are, yes, the low oil pressure light has gone out. And the, there's the engine. We have a good start on that. Now we're looking for 115 volts, and there it is. Now we're switching to engine number one. generators on engine number one. There it is. Now we're going to switch to the main engines for our power. Turn on the air conditioning and heat in the back. Turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Navigation lights are on. Taxi lights are on. We are now ready to make our taxi to the active runway. So, flaps 5, RTO for auto brake. Alright, everybody ready? Then let's take the brake off. Apply a little power here to get ourselves unstuck. And off we go.
airplanes, there's all sorts of airliners out there. Now our frame rate is 22, 23, 24. We're doing very good. Ah, oh, look at that. We have Ryanair out there. There's an Emirates jet. Look at the size of that. Goodness gracious. That is huge. That's one of those double deckers. That's big. clear up ahead that so we may be all right to get a quick takeoff I'm getting my tower frequency ready Runway 8 right, altimeter 10. 
This is a busy airport. One two one point eight four. World travel five zero six seven. Clear to land. Runway eight. Right number two. Orbit five one two six. Lines. Orbit one seven eight zero. Clear to land. Runway eight. Right number three for landing. Follow the bombardier. Clear to land. position for
is now confirmed. I cancelled the IFR, so we're going in on VFR onto runway 28. The weather conditions according to ATIS is we have a few clouds at 800 feet, 14,000 feet scattered ceiling, 8,000 broken. Temperature is 11 degrees, altimeter is 1010. So, we are descending and we are on course for landing at runway 28. The weather, as you can see, is not brilliant. There's quite a bit of cloud around it. So we will be in uh, visibility conditions uh, with problems in visibility, I should say, uh, in a little bit. But we're going to try to slow up so that when we get into those clouds, it won't be such a bumpy ride because it is bumpy out there. Okay. Get your seats arranged. And everything is looking good. Okay. All right. Yes, yes, yes.
because the previous flights have uh, landed in that little wing and uh, we'll do the same thing. the 
accepting the ILS approach for runway 
to reflections that's really good you know this is a very nice airport scenery this Dublin one I believe this is MK Studios who did this they did a very very nice job of it My frame rate is 28. Dublin ground, Pacifica 9134, request taxi to the gate. Pacifica 9134, taxi to gate 133, via taxiway 02, whiskey 1, hotel 1, Foxtrot India, November, November, Echo, Romeo. Taxi to gate 133, using taxiway 02, whiskey 1, hotel 1, Foxtrot India, November, November, Echo, Romeo, Pacifica 9134. a runway here so best make sure that it's clear and so there's one two two And there's the bus, kamikazes, they're everywhere. 
This is really nice. This is a very nice airport. Dublin Ground, Pacifica 6, Niner 4, I with India, ready to taxi, IFR. Pacifica 6, Niner 4, 5, taxi to and hold short of runway 2, 8, via taxiway, Alpha Tango 3, Alpha Tango 4, Foxtrot 1, Echo 1, contact tower on 118.6, when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short, runway 2, 8, via taxiway, Alpha Tango 3, Alpha Tango 4, Foxtrot 1, Echo 1, Pacifica 6, Niner 4, I. And shutdown is complete. Well, we made it. Runway 28, smooth enough landing. We were lucky though that we did slow up so that we managed to be able to maintain distance between the landing aircraft that was on the runway and was turning off, fortunately for us. Otherwise, we would have been too close and we would have had to have a go around. No shame in that, by the way, but passengers, you know, they write these letters. And that's the reason why I always preferred to fly cargo. Cargo never complains. <laughs> right. Well, that's the end of part one. Now, part two will be the next flight, and that will be for iTalk Games, who wants to fly from Dublin to Manchester. So join me next time, will you, for the flight from here to Manchester. See you around the block.